Day four cycling from Monterey, California to Los Angeles. I'm here with Lucy. Today's ride is gonna be 100K and mainly downhill. So we thought we'd mix things up and give you six tips for your first bike tour. And it just so happens this is Lucy's first bike tour. So she's the perfect person for the job. Tip number one is always be eating. I don't care how fit you think you are, you need to fuel your rides. So when you're on the bike, eat something little every half an hour and be drinking as well. But also remember that if you're doing long days, you need to eat normal food as well. Enough calories to sustain what you're doing and be able to recover for the next day of riding. Like potato waffles. Ideally, you wouldn't eat potato waffles on the bike. Something easy to eat like jam sandwiches, gels. It doesn't have to be purpose-made bike food. Bananas are fantastic. Anything that goes down easy and is full of carbohydrate is perfect. If you wait until you're hungry or thirsty to eat and drink, then it's probably too late. So you want to stay on top of it. There's still so much left of this. I have set up on my bike computer alerts. So every, I think it's every 10 or 15 minutes, it pops up saying drink or eat, and it's actually got exclamation marks. And um, it's just a really nice prompt. It's similar to when you're on Zwift and your avatar has a drink, you're like, oh yeah, I should drink. You don't always have to do it, obviously, but it's a really good mental prompt to just remind you to keep at that. I find it's really, really helped my riding. Do you think you feel very different if you spend a day fueling properly versus not fueling? Yeah, massively. I have definitely spent a lot of days not fueling. I tend to not eat breakfast in normal life. I have made sure that I get some food down me in the morning for breakfast and just as soon as we start riding, just starting that like every 20 minutes, half an hour, eat something. And that's really helped. I feel like I'm growing up. <laughs> the next tip is do not book your whole trip before you arrive. There are too many things that could happen. Even if it's a short trip, things can get out of hand, rides can be really difficult, and sometimes you just need an impromptu rest day or just to completely change your route and do something easier. Did it stress you out or surprise you when I said we were booking the hotels the night before? I think I was a little stressed, but also it was my responsibility too. Actually, this was perfect. We had to change our plan last minute. Um, Big Sur was closed, so it was a good job that we didn't book our accommodation before we did. We knew that there was enough places to stay in each places we were trying to, each of the places that we were trying to stop. Looking back, it, it was perfect. It meant that if we needed to, we can, move things around um, and like be reactive to like if we had a really bad mechanical or if we just didn't want to get on our bikes the next day or we got ill or we just wanted to stay an extra day um, but uh, yeah it's nice to have that um, flexibility I would like to add if you are nervous and you do want to book things in advance then I would suggest using websites like booking.com or hotels.com because they often offer free cancellation for your bookings. So you can book things, you don't have to pay up front and it will be pay when you arrive and then if something does go wrong, I think as long as it's 12 hours before or something 24 hours before, you can cancel your booking. But if you wanted that itinerary, which is organized really well actually on booking.com and that's what we use when we cycled across America, um, which is a very long trip, that's a great way to do it. So bear that in mind if you are nervous. Look at those websites first. This is not sponsored by either of those websites, but they're really good. Don't pack too much stuff. If you pack for a holiday before, you can take pretty much as many things as you want and it's not an issue. Bike packing or bike touring, you wanna take as little as possible because it makes your bike heavier and less aerodynamic if you've got loads of bags on the side as well. I say this as I have the biggest, like heaviest bike ever, but, I'm editing these videos, so I've got the camera, laptop, microphone, big bag of cables, all of that stuff. If I didn't have that, you could probably get away with just a rear seat pack, a frame bag, and a front bag, so like a bar bag or maybe some food pouches, and that's all you need. The minimum I suggest you would take with you is a set of normal clothes, two sets of cycling kit, and we'll come onto that and why it's possible in a point later on. Toiletries, a small set of tools, make sure you have a chain breaker, a set of Allen keys, inner tubes, pump, patch kit, chargers if you have electronic gears, not everybody does, and then space for some nutrition as well. So if you've got bars, gels, or normal food, like normal food from here actually, this is a very nice little fruiteria, and that's kind of it. I think I probably bought too much nutrition with me, um, which is fine. I think for my first bike packing trip, it's better to be over prepared than under prepared. I put a jumper in at last minute, and I'm actually happy I did that because. It's been a little chilly in the evenings. But apart from that, I I think that's it. I've really enjoyed having extra space though to like 
put stuff in. That's been great. Obviously things do change when you start camping and you're staying by the side of the road because then you need your tent and your mat and your bivy and things like that. So this video is only really talking about your first trip which we assume would be going to hotels which makes things a lot easier. You don't even need to bring towels with you. If you're distributing bags around your bike make sure you put some on the front and not just all on the back because otherwise this happens, you can't control it. <laughs> some weight distribution is good. Otherwise this happens. And you bruise your legs. Oh. Having more space in your bags to add things is really key. I kind of did that by accident this trip, but it's great if you know you don't have specific places to stop. You can load up. We did it with sandwiches, um, juice, an example. I've carried this the whole way from the casino uh, to Ventura. And uh, yeah, that's been super helpful, especially if you're riding in the heat. Um, just be prepared. You can also strap things to your bags, like shoes and other fun stuff. Like what? Well, I, I've left llama. enough space in my bag, so I haven't needed to do that. Oh yeah, okay, yeah. Fair. <laughs> Maybe you want to pick up a souvenir. Maybe you win a lot of money in the casino and you need somewhere to put the money. Just have options. It's always good. You can buy. It. Uh, straps that are like a couple dollars, couple pounds from like outdoor shops. Tailfin does some, I know that. They're super handy. Um, I have some extra in my bag and always good to have. If for some reason you can't get hold of the Tailfin ones, there are also excellent straps by Black Diamond, so ski straps that you strap your skis together with. Uh, I've had a set of those, they were like orange ones. I'll put in a clip here and they were fantastic. You can strap loads of stuff around your rear pack if you're using a Tailfin like us or things on your forks like if you want to carry a spare tire bear in mind you should probably only put stuff on the outside of your bike that you're happy to get wet and dirty so like if you put a t-shirt on the back of your bike it's gonna get f***ed up this next tip might seem ridiculous but bear with me when you reach your accommodation just get into the shower with your kit on and wash it oh Get your clothes as clean as you can in the shower, squish them with your feet a bit on the floor and then afterwards wring them out and then chuck them on a towel. Spread them out and then roll them all up in the towel into a sausage shape and then either stand on the towel or wring it and it will dry out your kit well enough that when you hang it up on your bike or wherever you want to hang it in the room, in the morning it will be dry. Technically this means you could do a trip like this with only one set of kit but bear in mind if you crash or you lose a piece of kit and then you'll be stuffed. So maybe two is a safer option. The reveal. This has actually got stuffing in it, so it's gonna take a little longer to dry. <laughs> it's getting there. By the morning, this will be good to go again. Just remember to enjoy it. It's very easy to think, oh, we gotta do 100K or whatever ride, then we get to the hotel and then we share and then we have to eat and then we have to go to sleep. But like the whole point of this is that you're riding a bike and it's probably in a really beautiful place and yeah don't forget to enjoy it take it all in there'll be good moments there'll be bad moments but just like take it all in take it all in that was our six tips for your first bikepacking adventure let us know what your tip would be in the comments below